welcome everybody to uh, your essential guide to Giving Tuesday 2024. I know it's June, so uh, there's some time, but as we all know, Giving Tuesday will all creep up on us. So I'm glad we're all here to, to get started. So my name is Lisa Galperin. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager at Mighty Cause. So just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, if you have any questions, please utilize the questions tool in your Zoom panel. That way it's easier for me to keep track of all of the questions coming in. I will peri periodically check in if we do have any questions, um, but uh, it's just an easier way for me to see that. Um, and as if there are any questions that come through in the chat, I'll try my best to uh, pull those up as well. So for today's agenda, uh, we're gonna be going over why Giving Tuesday. So why should you participate in Giving Tuesday? Why is it so important? A look back at 2023, building your Giving Tuesday roadmap, Giving Tuesday strategies, spreading the word about your campaign and how do you finish your campaign? Um, and as well, this slide deck and this webinar will be sent in an email after uh, the uh, webinar has finished. So um, it'll probably be sent out um, sometime tomorrow. So before we get into Giving Tuesday, just a little bit about Mighty Cause. For those of you who are not as familiar with Mighty Cause, uh, we've been around since 2026. Um, we've been in a nonprofit space for quite a long time. We used to be called Razu. Um, so we are a year-round fundraising platform. We uh, have built a platform and continue to try to build a platform that is easy for nonprofits to fundraise, that you know you guys can focus on the most important things, which is engaging with donors, um, you know, creating your campaign, et cetera. But that process of actually um, managing your donors and uh, making it an easy donation process, that's where we come in. So we have a lot of different uh, tools and features available on the platform, and a lot of them are actually available um, through our Giving Tuesday um, uh, event that we host every year. Um, so just some of the things that we provide an embeddable donation form, integrations, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, donor data management, analytics. Um, as I said, we've tried our best to create a platform where it's easy for nonprofits to come in um, uh, you know, do everything they need to for fundraising. So why Giving Tuesday with Mighty Cause? Um, so Giving Tuesday is a day that has was built to do good globally and year round. Um, it started in 2012. So for those of you who are not familiar as much with the history of Giving Tuesday, and it started really as a response to all the consumerism that happens around Thanksgiving. We have Cyber Monday and Black Friday and Giving Tuesday was that call to action. Um, for organizations. Um, and it's one of the highest volume days of charitable giving in the United States. Um, so it's a really important day, I would say, for all nonprofits to engage with because it is a universal call to action to donors to support nonprofits. Um, and as well, uh, it also is a great opportunity to start building in your year-round messaging. December is also one of the highest giving months in the year. Um, I think maybe it is the highest giving month of the year. Um, so it is also kind of a start to end of year giving as well. So on uh, Giving Tuesday, for those of you uh, who haven't uh, seen um, the date this year, it is December 3rd. It is always the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. On Mighty Cause, uh, we host our own event uh, where you can register to participate, which I'll get into in a second. Um, on our platform, um, early giving, so when nonprofits can start receiving gifts that count towards any prizes, um, that is November 19th. And then it all comes into um, Giving Tuesday. Registration is now open for our event. Um, so I'll share the link. Um, that link is available actually right at the bottom there. Um, it is a 27 hour marathon event. So it starts midnight um, on the third and then it will go into a 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the fourth or uh, midnight for um, anyone who's on the West Coast. So we offer a variety of uh, resources uh, that organizations have access to by registering. So you'll have access to 
a lot of our fundraising tools like matching grants, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, our uh, checkout experience, et cetera. We also provide a toolkit um, with live training recorded webinars. Um, you also receive priority, um, I'm sorry, customer support, and that's email or phone. Um, and we also have templates, uh, email templates, uh, graphics, et cetera. And lastly, of course, a uh, chance to win prizes on the um, day as well. So to register, you can simply head to givingtuesday.mightycause.com. There's a big registration button. All you have to do is complete the registration form. It takes two seconds. It's completely free to do that. Um, and then uh, the other task in order to get approved for the event is just completing your to-do list on Mighty Cause. Um, that may sound a lot, but the to-do list is really just adding it, your nonprofit logo and um, adding a thank you message. It's really not a lot. It's really just there to help you kind of start that process of getting your page set up on the platform for Giving Tuesday. So it shouldn't take a, a lot of time. And then once you do that, um, you'll receive a notification that your organization has been approved for the event, and then you're all good to go. So um, on our platform, we also have an Accelerate um, a, a plan, uh, which provides further tools and features. Um, if that's something that you're looking for, you need, and that includes our CRM, text to give, our native integrations, um, and as well as integrations with Zapier, our volunteer tool, and as well as uh, priority customer support. All right, so now that's a little bit about Giving Tuesday. Um, let's take a look back into what happened in Giving Tuesday 2023. All right, so um, this was recorded by Giving Tuesday um, Data Commons. Um, so on Giving Tuesday last year, $3.1 billion was raised from Giving Tuesday. Um, so that was about a 6% increase from 2022. So it was an increase. However, what they did find was that um, 34 million adults participated, which was actually a 10% decrease from 2022. Um, and this aligns with also some other reporting like MNR benchmarks um, as well, where they found that there was um, a, a drop in Giving Tuesday um, and end of year as well. Um, overall, charitable giving dropped 2.1% in 2023 after inflation. Um, but what also MNR benchmarks found as well was that still Giving Tuesday and end of year, regardless of that drop, is still the biggest time of the year in terms of um, giving and donations. Um, so although of that drop, which again led to the a bit of the economy, inflation, um, as well as I think um, uh, really, I think those were the two primary things that kind of led to that decrease in, in giving. Um, but it still means that Giving Tuesday is one of the biggest months of the year for giving. So what does that mean for 2024 if we've seen a drop in um, Giving Tuesday? So um, what is still essential is to hone in on monthly donors, right? You cannot rely on just Giving Tuesday or a specific day of giving for your fundraising. Um, so the Fundraising effect Effectiveness Project um, in their 20 2023 report, they found that one-time donors accounted for 70.6% of donors, um, but they only contributed about 41.8%. Um, so those that actually gave more than six or seven gifts, they actually contributed the rest of that. So recurring donors really make up a huge portion of amount of donations that nonprofits are receiving um, overall. And they also provide an ability to really rely on that revenue stream throughout the year. Um, and so in terms for Giving Tuesday, that's definitely something you wanna think about is maybe this is the opportunity to create a recurring, um, a recurring donation campaign. Um, as additionally, so one of the things to also consider is not focusing as much on large donors and building out a more diverse base of support um, from the research is that uh, millennials are one of the most actual charitable um, giving groups. And I think broadening that base of who your donors are is also something to consider for Giving Tuesday this year. 
as well, some things to consider uh, for this year is the upcoming elections and um, just the continuing inflation. Inflation has been, um, I believe it will go down um, this year, but it still will heavily affect donors um, in, the, in the rest of the year. Um, however, some positives in terms of 2024 is that low unemployment and increased consumer spending means that there's still donors that are, um, are able and willing to give to organizations. So I'm going to just take a pause and see if there's any questions about that. So are you worried about the US election affecting donations in 2024? Um, that is something to consider, I think in any election, presidential election cycle, especially with um, that continuous call to action, um, that is something to consider. Um, I don't have any data in terms of how much that is predicted to affect, but that is you know, something that will affect this upcoming year. Uh, also, Giving Tuesday is much later than last year. Is this a concern? Um, do you have case studies from previous year that was in December? Um, I don't have any case studies in terms of from last, uh, from the previous year uh, or previous years where it was in December, but this really means that December is going to be an even bigger year of giving um, because it's going to coincide with end of year and as well as Giving Tuesday. Um, so, I don't necessarily think it's going to make um, a negative impact. It's really just going to make that time even more important. Um, if you're using the Mighty Cause platform, but the free version, is it still free to register for Giving Tuesday? Yes, it is free for everyone to register for Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is completely free to register. If you're interested in some of our uh, Accelerate tools, that is an additional fee, but um, otherwise you are more than welcome to register. All right, so I'm just gonna continue because we've got a lot to get through. All right, so building your Giving Tuesday roadmap. So when you're building your Giving Tuesday roadmap, um, you want to think about your priorities. Um, so analyze the, your donation data to see where your nonprofit is and where you need to go. I think in terms of any campaign, if you've ever been on a webinar <laughs> with myself, you've probably heard me reiterate this a lot, is uh, having a goal and looking at your metrics, I think is the foundational piece of creating a campaign because um, that's really going to guide you in terms of your strategy and what you want to do for Giving Tuesday or any campaign in general. So a couple of, um, you know, you want to identify some development um, priorities. So is it donor retention? Is it donor acquisition? Is it recurring giving? Is it engaging partnerships? Um, uh, so you can send a donor survey. You can um, collect feedback from your staff. Um, think through exactly what are the priorities you want from Giving Tuesday. So one of the things that we have available on the platform is a donor retention report. So if you've actually participated in a past Giving Tuesday, this is something that you can utilize on our platform. And um, you can pull that up and actually see how many donors you have retained or haven't retained from last year. Um, so if you are participating this year and you've participated um, last year, um, this is a filter that you can pull up. If you're, uh, if you're going to register for the first time this year, this is something that you can utilize next year. Um, and again, this is a way for you to easily collect that data and determine, is that a priority? So in terms of goal setting, how much are you looking to raise in 2024? I think if you want to start there and what exactly is your uh, donation amount that you're trying to raise? Are, how much are you looking to raise on that day or that week or for the month of December overall? Um, and something to also consider is the non-monetary goals that you want to set. Maybe the goal this year is you want to increase your social media following or your social media engagement, or you want to increase peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So when you're thinking about your campaign, um, you want to focus on what exactly are you fundraising for? How is your campaign going to 
stand out in the sea of not only other nonprofits and their uh, call to actions, but also everyone else who's trying to get everyone's attention during that time of the year. Um, and we'll talk about some ways that you can do that. Um, but just a couple of short ways is creating testimonials, assets um, that you can really share your story there. So what we've seen in the past in terms of what um, great campaigns have done and what we've learned from them is relevant. So why your nonprofit matters um, in the current moment. Authenticity, examples of how uh, the challenge that you have related to your cause in your community and how your organization responding to it. Um, urgency, that this problem that you're trying to solve, it's urgent and you need support now and also creativity in terms of standing out. So um, when we're thinking about um, in terms of, you know, when you're communication planning um, and thinking about your messaging for Giving Tuesday, um, you want to, I, I always think it's helpful to first think about what is your nonprofit's message and then what is your Giving Tuesday message. So in terms of your nonprofit message, you want to define two to three key messages that you want your audience to know about your nonprofit in 2024. Um, this is going to be your starting point. So what is your mission? What's your vision? Why do you do what you do? Um, these key messages can act as a thread and it can go throughout your social media, your email, um, et cetera. And I'll kind of show how that blends into Giving Tuesday. But just an example of um, how you would do this if for um, yourself as a nonprofit, key messages, uh, Lisa's Food Pantry. Um, we believe that people have a right to be free from hunger and that food is a human right. Communities have a responsibility to care for their own and our food pantry is a way to care people in our community. Natural disasters hit the most undeserved people in our community hardest and we are committed to helping them make it through. So three key messages related to that example nonprofit. So how do you use this for Giving Tuesday? So once you kind of have, what are your three overall messages as a nonprofit? Well, what are you trying to then achieve with your campaign related to those messages? Um, your, it, this is really going to be, your, your top level nonprofit key messages get filtered down to your Giving Tuesday messaging. Um, and it's gonna really speak more into your core values and communicate what your current campaign is all about. Um, so you want to keep them relatively broad, but also include facts, figures, and also statistics. So in this example of our campaign messaging, so we are raising $10,000 so we can afford to expand our food pantry's physical space and feed even more people in our community. There is increased need for our services in the community and we must grow to meet that need. We want to provide 100,000 meals by the end of 2024, and this campaign will set us up to do that. So again, super concise, but also specific in what we're trying to raise and what we're trying to accomplish. So I wanted to take a short break and do this practice for everyone. Um, I This is kind of one of my favorite ones because I love to see what people write. But um, think about, answer each question in a brief sentence. What does my nonprofit do? How would a donation affect my organization? How can a donor support my organization? And I would frame the sentence in terms of how would you explain this to a child? So I'm going to just put a minute on the clock. Um, and if you guys want to um, add your sentences to the chat, we can see then what everyone has written.
Okay. Feel free to continue entering them because I think it's helpful for everyone to see how everyone else uh, frames their organization, but I'm just going to read a couple that have come through. My organization grants dreams to critically and chronically ill children from three to 18 years old. Uh, we support foster and adoptive families with free events that allow kids and families alike to socialize together. Uh, the neighbor fund provides immediate financial support to our neighbors in need. We rescue homeless and abandoned dogs and cats in the 20,000 miles of Benton County, Arizona. Awesome. That's so great to see. I love seeing all the different descriptions of your organizations. Um, and I hope this is a helpful practice. Again, I think it's really helpful because it will blend into how you're going to be able to communicate your nonprofit on Giving Tuesday. All right, so in terms of um, talking points, so kind of in some of the examples um, I shared previously and in some of the examples you guys have also written is um, you wanna gather some facts or figures about your organization. Um, I think those are really useful to uh, provide to donors in terms of, you know, is there, uh, how many meals are you providing? How many animals are you supporting? Um, those are really helpful to include into your communication um, and around, again, kind of the impact that a donor can make for your organization. Um, that can blend into your um, call to action, right? We uh, save 20,000, we've saved 20,000 cats and dogs um, in our county, help us save 5,000 this year. Um, and so you can utilize your staff um, to kind of put together those statistics if possible. Um, and those are also really great speaking points to any staff or community members that you're reaching out to or corporations in terms of also any matches you're looking for. All right, so um, when you are uh, working on your Giving Tuesday campaign, I think it's really helpful to build out a timeline. So something that we offer is a, a timeline or checklist for success that's available in our toolkit um, to really help <laughs> make sure that not everything falls on you uh, that last week of November, which I know it's very easy to do that. Um, so you want to prioritize what are your, your goals um, for fall. So that includes, is it asset building, um, reaching out to certain donors, et cetera. Um, and I think it's helpful to set benchmarks. And again, if you do have a team around you, um, bringing them in and designating them different um, jobs, such as maybe someone does social media for Giving Tuesday, someone does the outreach, someone creates the assets. Um, so I think creating maybe a bi-weekly or monthly meeting um, to talk about what you're doing for Giving Tuesday can help you stay organized and again, have that specific time to talk about Giving Tuesday. Uh, so that timeline is located um, in our toolkit. Uh, so um, if you register for our Giving Tuesday event, it is available for you there. All right, uh, just a couple of questions. So do payments for Giving Tuesday go through Mighty Crowds or does it link to our payment options? That is a great question. So all donations um, that are processed through Giving Tuesday are processed through Mighty Cause. Um, so all donations on Mighty Cause are processed through Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation, which is a donor advised fund. Um, so that means that we send out the tax receipts to the donors. That's something you don't have to worry about. Um, if a donor has any issues or questions, they can come directly to us. Of course, they can come to you. They're your donors. But that's something that we can also support them if they need a copy of a receipt or they set up a recurring donation and they need to update it or et cetera. We can help them um, as well on that. Um, but all of uh Yes, all donations through Mighty Cause go through our donor advice fund. Um, and as well, on our platform, um, donors can give in a variety of different ways. So through credit card, um, ACH, uh, we have Venmo, uh, PayPal, and Apple Pay, and Google Pay. Um, would pairing Giving Tuesday with a GoFundMe campaign be complementary to create um, competing interests? I always recommend to have one page. I think it's a little bit confusing sometimes when you have two places for donors to go. So you just wanna have one de dedicated place that you're directing um, donors to go to. Registering with Mighty Cause will allow people to donate to a nonprofit on Giving Tuesday through Mighty Cause, yes. 
Uh, it is completely free to register for our Giving Tuesday event. Um, there is a transaction fee. So we have a pricing guarantee system. So we guarantee that um, your total cost uh, in your in your aggregate cost per disbursement won't go over 1.9% 1 .9 and 49 cents per donation. Um, and donors have the option to cover transaction fees or not. So that is totally up to them. Um, but that's the only fee related to the platform. Otherwise, it is free to sign up. Is Mighty Cuts only for nonprofits in the US? Uh, yes, you do have to be a registered 501c3 charitable organization. All right, I'm going to continue. All right, so let's talk about some strategic uh, some fundraising um, strategies that you can utilize for Giving Tuesday that are the most common that we've seen. So one is matching grants. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with matching grants, so a matching grant is a fundraising tool that's used as a donation incentive. So a nonprofit yourself would secure a large donation. And we'll talk about what does that mean, a large donation. Um, and that's offered as a match to incoming donations. Um, so it is quite literally an incentive. It acts as a like, buy one, get one free, right? If I know that um, my donation is being matched, so if I give $5 and um, I know that by giving $5 and that's going to be matched, it's actually $10. I am more incentivized to give or even give more. So matching grants, because uh, of their uh, just, again, kind of they act as a buy one, get one free, essentially. Um, they are a really great marketing communication tool. And it's a really great way in particular to motivate donors, especially when you have an event like Giving Tuesday, where it's, a specific day or specific time period, it really encourages donors to um, give during that period of time. Um, so I just provided some examples of just some organizations of how they have framed their matching grants for um, their organization. So we want to double your donation, help us raise 20k before 6pm today to unlock an all or nothing 20k matching grant. Your gift right now can go twice as far don't miss your chance to double your donation in August. Our matching challenge uh, is coming close to an end and there is just one day left for you to make a match. So I think these are really great examples, again, of how that's really encouraging donors to give uh, during Giving Tuesday. So there are a couple of different matching grants and we'll have actually a dedicated webinar specifically to matching grants but uh, just to quickly kind of go through them. So the most common type of match is one-to-one. -one. So I get $5 that's matched one-to-one. -one, so it's a $10 gift, a percentage match. So maybe that's, you know, two to one. So um, it even is more or less and a cumulative threshold match. So maybe it's not by donation amount, but maybe it's that you have to receive five donors or you have to receive 50 donors in order to receive your match or you have to receive 50 donations in order to receive your match. So why are matching grants um, a useful tool for donors or donor engagement? Um, because um, as I kind of explained or mentioned, um, be because of the incentive that it creates, uh, it really allows donors to know that they are maximizing their gift at that time. And that's why, again, it's a really great tool for specifically for giving days because it's uh, really, you know, letting it's a call, an immediate call to action of if you donate now, if you donate before today, your donation is going to make a bigger impact than it would the rest of the year. For a grantor, it's really an opportunity for them to make a larger impact. So if you do have a major donor, um, let's say $1,000, it's really a way for them to still give how they would normally give. But this way, you can actually, you know, motivate other donors uh, to give to your organization. Um, so if a donor, a major donor usually gives $1,000, their match could really kind of mean that they're bringing in $2,000 for your organization by providing a match. So um, in terms of matching grants and sponsorships, so 
uh, this is also a really great opportunity to reach out to your local businesses, um, to uh, your local um, organizations in your community. Um, this can be an icebreaker of explaining what is Giving Tuesday, the importance. And again, this kind of goes back to your key messaging is if you have that key messaging of what your nonprofit does, what are your goals for Giving Tuesday, that can help in terms of your prospecting for grantors or for reaching out to local organizations or, or companies, etc. cetera. Um, for companies, this is also an opportunity for them to be involved in Giving Tuesday for them to build their uh, philanthropic, um, if they're looking to create uh, their corporate film philanthropy um, and build their reputation for giving back in the community. Uh, this is an opportunity for you, know, you to add their logo to your emails um, to, really, to include their names in your communication, et cetera. Um, and it's really just a different way to engage with your community, right? That ask of, it's a different way that someone can make an impact for your organization. So we'll get into more of this in our matching grants webinar, uh, but just some things to consider when you're looking at, uh, some things to uh, can, uh, follow as you are uh, re consider who you're reaching out to for matching grant is, um, I think it's helpful to kind of put together who are potential people that you think would be helpful, such as board members or major donors, or if there is, a, again, a company that you've worked with before, um, creating one-on-one -on -one outreach, a specific email, what is that language you want to include? And again, you may have to explain what Giving Tuesday is using that key messaging when it comes to making that ask. All right, so another common um, strategy that's used on Giving Tuesday is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So for those of you who are not familiar with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a technique where a nonprofit leverages their existing support network to bring in new supporters by asking their network of people to ask their social network for donations. I know it sounds a little confusing, but hopefully this graphic um, helps. So uh, what's really great about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is that it helps you reach new audiences on a day when many people are looking to open their wallets and support a charitable cause. So even if you have a robust list of donors um, that you can solicit to on Giving Tuesday, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising gives you additional names. It gives you access to more people that you wouldn't have access to before. Because again, the idea is that if I'm a volunteer for a nonprofit and I peer to peer fundraise because I that's where I adopted my dog, I love them so much, I want to support them, I'm going to send that to my colleagues, to uh, my family, um, to my friends, um, and share with them why am I asking um, them to support this organization and share my personal connection with them. Um, and again, that's a donation that you wouldn't have been able to um, have before. So a little bit of what I was talking about in terms of peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising really deepens the donor, your donor relationship. So in terms of this could be part of your stewarding process of are there, um, you know, volunteers or people that you think would be, um, you know, someone who would be interested, alumni that would be interested in creating peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. Um, it's an easy and fun way to get involved and it's different than just asking for a donation. And as I mentioned, it's an opportunity for people to share why they support your organization. Um, we'll talk about, uh, well, let's actually move on to there. Um, so some examples of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns to think about. So Charity Walk the Marathons are an example of a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. They are probably the most popular and well-known um, and they bring a, a, you know social networks together. A birthday fundraiser is an example of kind of a, a passive peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign um, because someone is, again, wanting to support their organization or support your organization for their birthday. Um, as well as giving events like Giving Tuesday is an opportunity to um, kind of engage with, uh, with your supporters, recruit them and have them help reach out. Um, to their networks and board challenge. Um, so 
as I mentioned, in terms of sharing your story, um, board challenges are one of the most common peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns. Um, it's an opportunity for your board members to share with their friends and family why they you know, work with your organization. Why is your organization important to them? So I've just created a couple of, uh, um, and I will just continue on. So um, this is just an example of our platform of how peer-to-peer -peer fundraising can be used. Um, so we have individual peer-to-peer peer, peer -peer fundraising page, which you'll see in the um, bottom right, Esther's Readathon Marath uh, fundraiser. And then we have something called group fundraising pages where individual people like Esther can come together with their pages and have a collective fundraising page. And then we have event fundraising. So if you have multiple teams, um, so this is a great example, a school readathon where the school has a readathon, each uh, grade has their own team, and then each student has their own page um, within the team. Um, so this is uh, kind of how it flows in on Mighty Cause. So here are two example, or here's an example um, uh, of a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign um, where you can be creative and a way to, again, invite people in. So this is Wild Pants by the Ark of Palm Beach County. Every year they hold a Wild Pants um, campaign where they have their supporters um, create a fundraising page, um, share an image of kind of funky or crazy pants that they wear. Um, they have friends and family that um, make donations to their pages, and then it all accumulates to a fashion show that they have at the end where they all show off their crazy pants. So I think this is an example of a really fun way to engage with supporters um, and make it a fun event. And then this is an example of a board challenge um, using our team fundraising pages, uh, where, um, again, you kind of have a dedicated group page for uh, your board. They would have their own pages, and then they can send, again, to their colleagues or friends or family um, to hear, and it shares, again, their mis mission about why they're uh, supporting your organization. All right, so I'm going to just take a pause and look at questions. Awesome. So I see a couple of people saying matches work. I love peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. I'm so good. It's so great to see, you know, other organizations where that's that strategy has really helped. That's something that just anecdotally I've seen really um, be useful and uh, effective tools in terms of in general for any campaigns, but in particular for giving events like Giving Tuesday. All right. So I don't see any further specific questions, so I'm going to continue. All right. So spreading the word. So your communication planning uh, and content planning for Giving Tuesday. So you wanna create enough content to keep your promotion and appeals fresh. So again, kind of going back to the beginning where we talked about key messaging, that's why I think that that exercise is really important because then when you're thinking about your communication, when you're thinking about your asset building, you can always go back to those three points or you know one sentence that you've created and how does that all go back to that? So. You wanna come up with a story. So what is your campaign story or theme? And again, goes back to what are your goals? What are you trying to achieve? What is the impact that you're looking to make? Um, you, There are definitely, and I'll show an example of I think an effective Giving Tuesday video. Um, what type of video that you think that you could share that really um, hammers home your organization, your cause, what assets can you use? And those don't have to be professional, but do you have images that really show the work that you do? Or if that's hard to capture, do you show the people that you affect or the team that is actually, you know, making the impact? Um, and then as well, infographics to kind of show any of those stats, um, I think is helpful as well. So some helpful communication tips, always have a clear call to action in your communication, whether that's on social media or email, and I'll show that in a second, what does that mean? But making sure that donors know in your communication what you're asking them to do. Is it to give at that time because you have a matching grant? Is it to um, make a recurring donation? What is your call to action at that time? I think keeping it short and sweet. I think that, um, as I mentioned, there's going to be a lot of communication going out at that time. So I think 
making your communication short and sweet, um, I think will save you time, but also it will ensure that uh, your donors will read through it and um, look through your assets. Um, and it's well focus on the channels that your donors are. If your donors are not on TikTok, don't worry about creating a TikTok video. You know, focus where your donors are. If they are on Facebook, then focus on posting on Facebook. If they are primarily just on email, then focus on that. You want to work smarter, not harder. If it's something, again, a goal you set that you do want to increase um, social channels, that's that, that's different. But you you don't want to spread yourself thin in terms of, you know, the content that you're creating. I think it's helpful to always plan ahead and schedule uh, before Giving Tuesday because a lot will be going on the day of. But you want to think about in general for your communication of who are you reaching out to um, and the amounts that they give. Because maybe the communication you send out to your major donors last year or even anyone who gave last year is going to be different than maybe your general audience, right? Because to the donors who gave last year, maybe to the donors who gave over $100 last year, your communication will say, make a bigger impact this year than last year, or your donation did this, help us do X, right? So your language may be a little bit different, um, depending on how you segment your, um, your, um, your list. So when we talk about call to action, so call to action is the action, as I mentioned, uh, that you want people to do when they open an email. And also this means includes also social media as well, like in your description, what are you asking them to do? Um, but you wanna have a clear like button um, on there that is specific as to what are you asking them to do? Um, so most call to actions are hyperlinked in emails. Um, so you want to make sure you're directing them directly to the place that you want to them to make a gift, if that's your call to action. Um, so you want to make it stand out and also um, have the direct link in there. So when you are also thinking about um, your communication planning, you want to think about, you know, including some of your brand colors in there. And if there's also kind of um, an additional color or something that can make your campaign stand out of it. I just showed a couple of examples of social posts in the past of how they've kind of, of the different um, uh, social images that they've used. Um, I think what is most effective uh, as you see here is um, really showing like who, who you are impacting or what your organization is about. So in the right, um, where there's gallery, right? They have students there, their organization deals with students. We have two animal organizations, they have animals there. Um, so it's really getting across super quickly what their campaigns are about or who they're supporting. Um, and I think just bring back to social media, I think the reason why social media is important for Giving Tuesday is that it really was built as a way to inspire and celebrate philanthropy in the social media age. So when you are posting, utilize the hashtag Giving Tuesday so you can be part of the conversation and the community surrounding Giving Tuesday. So a couple of free, I think, useful marketing tools. Um, is MailChimp. So MailChimp has different subscription levels, but they do have a free uh, standard marketing, uh, email marketing tool that you can utilize. I think if you haven't used an email marketing tool, that's a great place to start because it is, uh, it's free to ha have their starter plan. Um, and this is a great way to have a place where all of your uh, donor uh, communication is coming in. Um, and utilize that on Mighty Cause we also have a direct integration with MailChimp. So if you receive any gifts on MailChimp, it will, or sorry, on Mighty Cause, it'll go directly to your MailChimp list. Canva, um, so that is a really easy uh, way to uh, create templates and graphics. Um, so we'll be sharing some Canva graphics and templates in our toolkits um, in the upcoming months uh, that organizations can utilize for Giving Tuesday. But that's a great way to free your assets and it's free for nonprofits. Uh, link tree for Instagram um, to add all of your links to. Unsplash if you're looking for royalty-free stock photos. 
CapCut if you want to make videos uh, for social media and Buffer, um, which is a free social media scheduler and planner. All right, so this is an example I thought of a really effective um, Giving Tuesday image and description, and it ties into some of the things that we've talked about. So the image, last chance, make two times the impact for oceans this Giving Tuesday. Super clear call to action um, and also super effective in that, right? They have a match on Giving Tuesday. They're directing them make double the impact for their organization on Giving Tuesday. And their description, time is running out to participate in the biggest giving day to give back to the oceans. Donate to Oceana today and take a stand against harmful plastic pollution, dirty offshore drilling, um, irresponsible fishing and other dangerous threats to our uh, planet's oceans. All gifts before midnight will be matched by a partner, Moroccan oil link in bio. So including the hashtag, including their key message, including that um, description about, uh, or including their matching grant. Um, I think this is a really great example, again, of how to make it super clear and concise and make that impact. All right, so this is a video I wanted to share. Um, let me just make sure that you guys will be able to hear the audio. You know if you cannot hey my name's ariel and i know this. we don't can you guys hear that someone could put in the chat that you can hear that okay awesome all right hey my name's ariel and i know we don't know each other but i need your help so once upon a time i had a sister named muriel who was diagnosed with osteosarcoma or bone cancer unfortunately muriel found out that the cancer was terminal but instead of moping around she wanted to do one last good deed before she died so during her last Christmas, Muriel asked friends and family to donate toys to her and she stuffed some stockings and sent it to Johns Hopkins Children's Hospital. She wanted to do this because she knew all too well how much it sucked to be a kid in the hospital during the holidays and she wanted to give these kids a reason to smile one last time. Sadly, we lost her that following February in 2014. In her memory, my family created a charity known as Muriel's Miracle Holiday Stockings. Every December we get together with a bunch of volunteers and we donate all kinds of good things to local children's hospitals. But due to COVID, we haven't really had many volunteers in the last year or so. That's where you come in. So there's a couple ways you can help us whether you have money or not. If you'd like to donate stocking stuffers, you can check out our wish list on Amazon. It's under Muriel's Miracle. Or you could fill stockings and send it to your local children's hospital in Muriel's honor. You could also send a monetary donation. Or you could simply use your word of mouth and boost this video. Duet this, comment, like, anything helps. We donate to kids of all kinds, zero to 18, boy, girl, neutral, you name it. Links to the Amazon wish list and the official Facebook page can be found in my link tree. And if you're able to help us this season, I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for helping me keep my sister's spirit alive. Awesome. So I showed that video because as you saw, that video was a minute and 24. And in a minute 24, she was really able to get across what their organization is all about the impact that they make and also what their call to action is, right? So she gave a couple of different call to actions, but she let them know where they could go and support their organization, how they can support their organization. Um, so yeah, I yeah I see a couple of people loving the video. Yeah, I think it's a really, I think she really articulates well her organization and why it's important to make a gift. All right, so we're gonna talk about closing the loop. So what does that mean? So this is sometimes often forgotten. And I know we're in June and we're already talking about end of December or end of Giving Tuesday, um, because this is often forgotten about because we're so focused on Giving Tuesday and the day itself that we forget about, well, what do we do afterwards? Um, so you want to... Well, Giving Tuesday is really a really great opportunity to blend into your end of your fundraising. We talked about in the beginning how Giving Tuesday is this year in December. So it's going to naturally blend into giving um, your end of year. So this is an opportunity to seg into your uh, end of your messaging and also your 2025 messaging, which is a little bit crazy. We're talking about 2025 already. Uh, so 
in your emails, you want to report your results of Giving Tuesday. And again, if your goals were maybe non-monetary or they were you want to get certain amount of donors or you wanted to get certain amount of peer-to-peer volunteers, whatever that is, share those results um, and share, again, the impact that their donation is going to make. Reinforce how those funds are going to be utilized. This will also help in future future communication, right? When you do a, a follow-up email in six months, you can update those donors of, hey, we said this is how we're utilizing your funds. Here's an update on how those funds are being utilized and the impact your gift is making. Um, if there are any major donors you received, a matching grantor, always picking up the phone and thanking them directly if there were any volunteers you had. Sharing on social media your results, again, um, really uh, sharing the impact that your donors made. And direct mail is still, I think, an effective tool for some organizations. So uh, writing a letter, I think a thank you card is still really um, a useful and effective tool um, for organizations and donors. So um, when you're thinking about, um, again, those thank you messaging, you want to plan how you're actually going to transition into giving from Giving Tuesday into your year end of your uh, campaign. So is there, were you not able to reach your goal? Are you, do you have another match for end of year? Uh, are you looking to kind of increase your impact by a certain amount? Um, uh, is it going to be the same same campaign, maybe you didn't reach your goal and you want to continue it. These are just some things to consider when you are thinking about what you're planning to do for the rest of December. All right, so we are at the end. So I'll leave some time for questions. But before we get to that, so just a couple of, oops, yes, just a couple of uh, last things. So next webinars that we have coming up. Um, So uh, this is um just one of our just general webinars is not necessarily giving Tuesday related, but it will have a lot of great um, content and uh, tips that you can utilize for giving Tuesday and top tips and tricks for donor engagement and management. Um, so that will be in July 11th. And then on July 25th, we're going to have a, a whole platform walkthrough and overview. So if you are planning on participating in our event, we're going to have a whole live walkthrough. So if you have any questions, uh, need any help or you want to just get situated on the platform we're going to be doing that at the end of july um we also have a lot of different other giving tuesday webinars um that we'll have that's related to matching grants communications all that stuff um so please check out our webinars um when they will be posted um and you can sign up there for them all right, so a couple of key dates to save. So one, registration is open for Giving Tuesday. So you can go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and complete the registration form and um, get that, uh, become registered for the event. Uh, on Mighty Cause, our early giving starts on November 19th and then everything culminates to December 3rd. So I'm going to just see what their questions. Are you going to receive a link to this presentation research? Yes. So um, the slide deck and the recording will be sent in an email, most likely sometime tomorrow, but you it will be sent out. What is the website to register for Giving Tuesday? Um, and let me just share this link with everybody. It is giving. All right, I just shared that link in the chat. Um, what do you think are the benefits for early giving? That is a really great question. So um, if you ever participate in a giving event, um, you'll find that most giving events have some sort of early giving period. Um, and we've actually found we're, we're one of the um, top technology providers for also giving events across the country. Um, so what we found is actually early giving is really effective in getting donors to give because obviously having donors give on a specific day or a specific time can be difficult. So having that kind of wiggle room um, to allow donors to give before Giving Tuesday um, just allows you, you know, to still attain those donors without having to stress about it actually coming on the day. Um, usually that time period in general, right, it's people, that language is already going out about Giving Tuesday. Um,
any other questions? Oh, I see, we're saving for the day and then afterwards. Um, so, I, well, in terms of afterwards, I mean, I think that, I think the benefit of Giving Tuesday in general as a day of giving is it is that call to action to donors to give, right? It is a reason to give, just like Cyber Monday or Black Friday, right? Buy this good on Black Friday because we have a deal, Cyber Monday, you know, this is the time to buy this product. Giving Tuesday, it's the time to make a gift, right? So it is kind of a built-in day of giving. So that's why um, it's such a, a useful day of giving and such an effective day of giving for nonprofits. Um, but obviously, you know, if a donor does not give and giving, giving, gives on Giving Tuesday and gives at the end of year, right, you're still getting the donation, but it, that's why it's useful. I hope that helps answer your question. Is it possible to have a successful Giving Tuesday when your nonprofit has had few donations so far? Yes, because success is really depends on what you deem as success, right? Not every organization has a huge matching, uh, who's a huge, uh, large donor that is going to give them a million dollars or even ten thousand dollars, right? We, our platform specifically caters to small to medium sized nonprofits. So, what is success for your nonprofits? And I think that goes back to goal setting: is you want to be realistic, right? If you have had few donations previously, maybe your goal is just to increase it by a little um I would say don't look at what other people's goals are what is your goal and again that kind of goes back to understanding what are your own metrics and what are you trying to accomplish right so if you are trying to I'm going to make up a something if you're trying to make sure that 50 kids in your community receive a backpack all right how much will that cost how much have you raised so far? How much are you going to have to raise in order to get to 50 backpacks for kids in your community? So really focus on your own organization. And um, and if the issue is just getting new donors, I would then focus on your specific cause and how are there any other organizations or are there any uh kind of groups or companies in your area that you can work with in terms of your specific cause. So whether that's feeding your community um, or saving animals. Um, can we start campaigning now um, on social media? Um, I would say now is a bit early uh, because I think if you start uh, advertising it now by the time giving tuesday comes around they're going to forget about it so um we do have um like i said a checklist uh, a timeline about when to start posting but i would say maybe a month out that's when you want to start posting does mighty cause use our donor information for anything apart from saying yeah uh no we do not so we are very uh strict about that we do not reach out to your donors. We don't contact your donors. We don't do anything with your donor information. We send them out tax uh, receipts after they make a gift. If they would like, uh, we do provide giving statements at the end of the year. So if they want to um, log into Mighty Cause and access their any previous donation receipts or a end of year giving statement that has all of their gifts, they can download that. Um, and that will be available to them. But otherwise, we don't sell their data. We don't reach out to them. We don't do anything with that. We know how important donors are for nonprofits. And um, yes, that is important for us as well. Awesome. Okay, I think that's the end of questions. But if any other questions come up, I'm just going to put our support email address. If you have any trouble with making uh, registering for Giving Tuesday, um, please let us know. Um, and yeah, I'm uh, I hope this was really helpful. Um, uh, please keep a lookout for our uh, follow-up email and uh, have a, a great rest of your day. All right, have a great day, everyone. Bye.